Cold Steve Austin versus The Rock is usually the match that springs to mind when we talk about WrestleMania trilogies. The Great One and the Rattlesnake put on three good matches at three different WrestleMania events, cementing their rightful place as legends of WrestleMania in the process. But two other guys who also had three WrestleMania matches were The Undertaker and Triple H. While their WrestleMania 17 encounter was pretty straightforward in terms of storyline, the WrestleMania 27 and 28 matches had a lot more going for them. Beating The Undertaker seemed a lot more important to Triple H 10 years after their first match at WrestleMania. While the WrestleMania 27 no holds barred match between Triple H and The Undertaker was good, the Mania 28 Hell in a Cell match was the one where the score would truly get settled. Billed as the end of an era, the Mania 28 Cell match was considered the match of the night by critics as the game and the dead man went to war for the very last time. Or at least, that's what they made us believe. Today, we're going to take a look at the end of an era match at WrestleMania 28. To understand the Hell in a Cell match at Mania 28 between Triple H and The Undertaker, we also really need to take a good look at WrestleMania 27 and the Triple H vs Undertaker no holds barred match. At the beginning of 2011, a series of vignettes played that showed us a date, the 21st of February. On the 21st of February episode of Raw, it was revealed that The Undertaker indeed was making his WWE return. The Phenom walked out to the arena to an amazing ovation, but he didn't get a chance to speak. Out comes Triple H to interrupt the promo, a guy who was also making a return to WWE television. Two huge superstars making their comebacks and here they are going face to face in the middle of the ring. Not a word gets spoken, but you completely understand what's going on. Both men look at the WrestleMania sign and The Undertaker accepts the challenge after thinking about it for just a few seconds. Showing no intimidation, Triple H gives Undertaker the classic DX taunt and the segment ends with both men staring each other down. A few days later, the match was made official on WWE.com. A face to face encounter took place around a month later between Taker and Hunter, and it was during this segment that Shawn Michaels got added to the storyline. HBK would play an important part in the Hell in a Cell match the following year, but for this upcoming WrestleMania 27 encounter, Shawn was used in a pretty clever way. HBK had tried to end the streak on two separate occasions. The second match resulted in Shawn losing his career to the Deadman. And Shawn Michaels was also, of course, Triple H's best friend. If anyone knew what Triple H was getting himself into by facing The Undertaker at WrestleMania, it was Shawn Michaels. Shawn surprises everyone by asking Triple H why he thinks he can do what HBK couldn't. What makes him think that he can end the streak at WrestleMania? Triple H says that Shawn Michaels got soft. HBK wanted to be the showstopper and Mr. WrestleMania, but Shawn also realized that he didn't have to win matches in order to be those things. Triple H says that he himself isn't the showstopper, but he has to win and he will win. Hunter says when he made his debut, The Undertaker stood out above everyone else. Countless times Triple H would see The Undertaker work matches when he was legitimately hurt, and to Triple H, that's what the wrestling business is all about. Hunter learned to respect The Undertaker more and more every single day, but there's one guy who he respects just as much, Shawn Michaels. Hunter goes on to tell the story of how he and Sean made a pact years ago. If either guy couldn't perform to the best of their abilities anymore, then the other guy would let his friend know about it. And Triple H came back to Raw to look at The Undertaker dead in the eye and tell the dead man that it's over, kind of extending this pact to the phenom out of respect. It may not be popular, but the dead man isn't performing the same way he once did. Triple H says The Undertaker will always have his respect, but it's time for the streak to end at WrestleMania. Triple H says he's the one, the one in 18 and 1, and with all due and well deserved respect, The Undertaker and his streak will rest in peace. Taker says if he wanted someone to put him down, it would be Triple H, but it isn't time. Taker says the game is going to kill himself trying to end the streak, but in the end, the streak will live on and so will The Undertaker. If Triple H doesn't believe him, then Hunter should talk to Shawn Michaels. Taker says Shawn gave him the best two matches of his career at WrestleMania. He came close, but Shawn didn't get the job done. 
When Taker looks at Michaels now, he doesn't see the same confidence and arrogance. He sees a man that was humbled. He sees the man whose career got ended by the phenom. Sean decides he's hurt enough. He tries to super kick Taker, but Taker grabs Michaels' foot. Hunter runs in to break it up, and Hunter then tells Sean to tell The Undertaker why the game is gonna end the streak this Sunday at WrestleMania, but Sean can't answer. HBK almost looks freaked out at what just happened. Sean ends up getting out of the ring and he says to Triple H that he can't win. The Undertaker laughs at Triple H to end the segment and the game is left wondering if he's made the best decision here in challenging the dead man. WrestleMania 27 wasn't a great mania in my opinion but the no holds barred match between Taker and Triple H was a highlight. It's a match that I feel doesn't get the credit it deserves. Right from the opening bell it's all about high impact. The game and the phenom are out to hurt each other and from the get go they start tearing each other apart, both inside and outside the ring. There's absolutely no holding back. This match though would take its toll on The Undertaker. The bumps he took seriously rocked the dead man and for the first time ever, The Undertaker had to get legitimately stretchered out of the arena when all was said and done. It was really that physical. People also complain about the amount of false finishes in matches like this, but I think they work really well in Undertaker's streak matches. We see title matches all the time on WWE television, but the streak only got defended once per year, and having lots of moments where the streak could end, to me, only added more excitement to the matches. False finishes in Undertaker matches during this time period were absolutely fine in my book. Anyway, after performing three pedigrees, Hunter grabs a steel chair and the dead man gets absolutely destroyed. Hunter tells the Undertaker to stay down, but the Phenom gets right back up. Triple H then performs the Undertaker's taunt before delivering a perfect tombstone pile driver, but somehow the Undertaker kicks out. Fear overcomes Triple H at this very moment. Desperate times call for desperate measures. The game grabs its sledgehammer to finish the dead man once and for all, but Taker's able to wake up and perform Hell's Gate. Hunter tries his best to get out of the hold, but in the end, Hunter has no choice but to tap out. The main story of the end of an era match then begins to unfold after the final bell, when we see the effects of the Mania 27 match on the dead man. The Undertaker took a beating during this bout. Triple H is able to walk away from the ring, but the Undertaker can't stand up. There's a certain irony about how this one ended. Remember, Triple H did say on Raw that The Undertaker wasn't performing the same way he used to, and it was time to put The Undertaker down for good. And even though the dead man kept the streak alive at WrestleMania 27, he certainly didn't look like a winner when all was said and done. The Undertaker revealed on his Last Ride documentary that he had to spend two full days in his hotel room after the Mania 27 match. The match at WrestleMania 27 was used to set the stage for Triple H vs The Undertaker at WrestleMania 28. The Undertaker completely disappeared after the No Holds Barred match, but on the January 30th 2012 episode of Raw, the dead man came back to confront and challenge Triple H. Again the challenge was made the exact same way, no words were spoken, but there were two big differences here. Firstly, it was The Undertaker challenging Triple H. And secondly, the game seemingly declined the challenge. Hunter got out of the ring and walked away, and fans were left confused. They didn't understand why Triple H would turn down another chance at ending the streak. Hunter opened up Raw the following week, and Triple H said he looked into the eyes of the dead man and there was something missing. Hunter didn't get butterflies in his stomach the way he usually would. He wasn't in awe, and he wasn't humbled to stand in front of The Undertaker. Hunter said he felt sorry for the Phenom last week, and the game wants to remember The Undertaker of old and not the guy who couldn't stand up after WrestleMania 27. Out of respect for The Undertaker, Triple H says no, he won't face The Undertaker again at WrestleMania. Triple H says he knows what he has to do to beat The Undertaker, he has to finish him. The game understands The Undertaker's limits, and maybe The Undertaker wants the game to put him down at WrestleMania, but Triple H won't do it. Triple H goes to leave the ring but the lights go out and a video plays where The Undertaker is watching last year's WrestleMania match. The Undertaker says he won't let WrestleMania 27 be the last image people have of the Phenom. He says he deserves vengeance and in return, Triple H will get one more opportunity at immortality. 
The video ends and we see Hunter standing in the ring. Clearly, he was having second thoughts. The following week, Shawn Michaels appeared on Monday Night Raw, and HBK said he watched everything that happened last week. He was surprised that Triple H didn't accept The Undertaker's challenge. Shawn thinks this is all a play by the game, Hunter's just playing mind games with the Phenom, so Triple H gets called out to explain himself. Hunter comes out and Shawn says he wants to hear the big announcement, but Triple H says the match isn't going to happen. Triple H reiterates about what happened last year, Undertaker won the battle but Hunter won the war. To beat The Undertaker, Triple H has to end The Undertaker, and Hunter isn't that kind of guy anymore. Sean reminds Hunter who he's supposed to be, the ruthless cerebral assassin who ends careers. In the HBK, it looks like Hunter has changed. Maybe Triple H married a McMahon and now he's becoming a McMahon. Hunter says Sean doesn't understand, and Sean agrees. He doesn't know what Hunter's business life is currently like, but what HBK does know is what they call men who back out of challenges. Triple H tries to walk away, but Sean gives Triple H some tough love, and Triple H says he has real life responsibilities, one of which being the future of WWE. Sean sees Undertaker as an opponent, but Triple H doesn't. The game sees The Undertaker as a brand that's good for business. Triple H says Undertaker, Sean and Triple H are the end of an era, the last of a group of guys who were a different breed, a group of guys who left it in the ring every night, a group of guys who would pay the ultimate price inside the ring without question, and Triple H doesn't want to be the one who ends that era. Triple H says he won't end The Undertaker for himself and he won't do it for Shawn Michaels either. Shawn is just a man who wants to live vicariously through the game because Sean couldn't get the job done at Mania's 25 and 26. Sean says that speech may work on a lot of people and he appreciates the little jab, but Triple H has to look at Sean and tell him no, he doesn't want to end The Undertaker's streak. The game looks straight at Sean and he says no, he doesn't want to end the streak. HBK bumps into Hunter as he leaves the ring, and after Sean leaves, the lights go out again in the arena, and a video plays again where The Undertaker again tells Triple H to give him what he wants. We also see The Undertaker cutting his hair while footage of Mania 27 plays in the background. The February 20th episode of Raw featured a live appearance from The Undertaker and the match was then made official, but fans got even more than what they bargained for when all was said and done. The Undertaker said for the last year he's relived the beating he took at WrestleMania 27 every single day. Mentally, it's been destroying The Undertaker, the uncertainty has been eating The Undertaker alive, and to put an end to the uncertainty, The Undertaker challenged Triple H. The dead man didn't think for a moment that Triple H would say no, but the choice wasn't Hunter's to make. The Undertaker says we are all on the verge of a wrestling apocalypse. The Undertaker and Triple H are the last of their kind, and the way Taker sees it, the suit, the tie and the corporate liabilities are just layers that cover up who Triple H really is. The uncertainty has to end at WrestleMania, Triple H has to stop lying to himself and lying to Sean. Triple H then comes out and when the game tries to speak, The Undertaker tells him to shut up. The Undertaker doesn't want Triple H's pity. What's pitiful is the excuses Triple H is making not to have this match. Hunter says Undertaker is right, this is the end of an era, but the era shouldn't die, it should carry on past WrestleMania. And Triple H says again that it's bad for business if The Undertaker's legacy doesn't continue on. Hunter says The Undertaker doesn't want redemption or vengeance, Triple H knows how to beat The Undertaker, and it seems like The Undertaker wants Triple H to end his career and that's something Hunter won't do. Taker then calls Hunter a coward, and this baits Triple H in for a moment, but again, Hunter says no. Triple H walks back up the ramp, and Taker says he's just figured it out. Triple H knows he can't do what his buddy Sean couldn't do, because deep down, Triple H knows that Shawn Michaels was always better than the game. This statement makes Triple H stop in his tracks, Taker obviously hit a nerve, the suit jacket and tie comes off, Hunter gets back in the ring and he says he can do what Sean couldn't, Triple H knows what to do to get the job done, Triple H is more certain than ever before that he can finish The Undertaker, and Triple H then agrees to the match, under one condition. 
There is no going back once both men step into the ring. The streak will end, the era will end, the Undertaker will end, and if both competitors are going to go all the way at WrestleMania, it has to happen in a special match type. Hell in a Cell! HBK was back two weeks later and Sean says The Undertaker must have said something to the game to make him instantly change his mind. Sean wants to see footage from two weeks ago and we see The Undertaker again saying that Sean was always better than Triple H. Sean finds it pretty interesting that this statement made Triple H accept the match. It seems that the worst thing someone could say to Triple H is that Shawn Michaels was better than the game and Hunter says it's got nothing to do with that. Triple H says he's tired of listening to people talk behind Sean's back, saying that HBK couldn't get the job done and HBK is a failure. Triple H says Shawn Michaels is the greatest in-ring performer of all time and it pains Hunter to look at Sean as if he's a loser. Hunter is gonna finish it at WrestleMania to stop people running their mouths about how Sean couldn't beat The Undertaker. Triple H is gonna do it for both Sean and himself. HBK watched the Mania 27 match and he had a prediction. He watched Triple H beat The Undertaker within an inch of his life, but Triple H lost and Sean's prediction was right. Sean says he knows who's gonna win at this year's WrestleMania though, because HBK has been made the special referee for Hell in a Cell. The problem here is that Triple H came off as condescending towards his best friend. And Triple H maybe shot himself in the foot when explaining why he accepted The Undertaker's challenge. Good stuff here. You'll hear quite a lot that the WWE was already creatively bankrupt around this time period, but looking back at this now in 2021, it's actually really good storytelling. There's still a few weeks before WrestleMania and this means we have more episodes of Raw to look at. The March 12th, 2012 episode featured more live appearances from Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker. Shawn shows us a replay from last week where Triple H said people are talking behind his back, calling him a loser for failing to beat The Undertaker. Shawn says he's been walking around the backstage area these past few weeks and absolutely no one has called him a loser to his face. But there has been one person he hasn't bumped into recently, and that's The Undertaker. Sean calls the dead man out, and Sean tells The Undertaker that he respects him. HBK vs Taker was special at Mania's 25 and 26, but if The Undertaker thinks Sean is a loser or a failure, then Taker should say it to Sean's face. Taker says Sean needs to stop and think for a moment. Is HBK repeating The Undertaker's words? Or is he repeating words chosen for The Undertaker, courtesy of Triple H? Taker says Sean is insecure, and HBK fires right back by reminding The Undertaker that it was he who begged Triple H for this WrestleMania match to put his mind at ease. And the reason Undertaker wants this validation is because Triple H beat him within an inch of his life last year. Sean reminds The Undertaker that he's the special referee for the end of an era match, and Undertaker says he'll deal with the outcome whether he wins or loses, but what he won't tolerate is Shawn Michaels sticking his nose in and letting his ego get out of control. The outcome cannot be tainted by HBK. If the outcome isn't pure, The Undertaker says there'll be hell to pay. Sean says, isn't it ironic that the guy whose career was ended by The Undertaker could be the same guy who counts the dead man's shoulders to the mat? Isn't it ironic that Shawn Michaels is the guy who could turn The Undertaker into a loser and a failure? And isn't it ironic that HBK could still be the guy who ends the streak at WrestleMania? Sean pats Taker on the arm before leaving the ring, and at the entranceway, HBK gets briefly greeted by Triple H. The game smiles at The Undertaker when Sean walks off, and Triple H also performs the DX crotch chop. So, the odds seemed stacked against the dead man. No one knew if Sean would really screw over The Undertaker at WrestleMania 28. The next week, Sean says there may be a Hell in a Cell match at WrestleMania, but everyone is talking about Shawn Michaels. HPK says it's he who holds the end of an era in his hands, and as Sean begins talking about how the end of an era really means the end of the streak, The Undertaker interrupts the promo. 
Undertaker reminds Sean that the Hell in a Cell match has to be pure, and just as The Undertaker was about to tell Sean to put a halt to the plans he and his friend are obviously cooking up, Triple H makes an appearance. Hunter says The Undertaker needs to stop worrying about Sean. As much as Sean's ego wants this all to be about HBK, it's not. There's only been 24 Hell in a Cell matches up to this point, and Triple H says he and Taker have been in 19 of them. The match started off as the Devil's Playground, but it's became Triple H's proving ground, and Triple H excels inside the cell. Taker doesn't think Triple H truly knows what it takes to beat the Phenom inside Hell in a Cell. Taker wants to know if Triple H will put it all on the line at Mania, and Triple H says if it means giving The Undertaker the end he so richly deserves, then yes, the game is prepared for the end of an era. Taker goes to leave the ring, but he has second thoughts. He looks back at DX, and Undertaker again tells Triple H that Shawn Michaels is better than the game. This makes HBK smile, but Hunter doesn't find any humour in what The Undertaker just said. Ok, let's check out the match. WrestleMania 28 took place in Miami, Florida on April 1st, 2012. We have The Undertaker seeking vengeance, Triple H getting another shot at immortality, a cell surrounding both men, a special referee whose intentions aren't clear at all, and the promise that this will be the end of an era. A goodbye to what many felt were the glory days of the WWE. The ingredients were all here for a classic. HBK and Hunter make their entrances, and The Undertaker shows off his new haircut to WWE audiences once he gets inside the ring. All three men look up, and the cell begins getting lowered. The bell rings, the crowd roars, and The Undertaker starts off strong with a series of strikes. The game tries to give as good as he gets, but The Undertaker's strike game far surpasses that of Triple H. The fight spills to the outside, and The Undertaker completely dominates Hunter here. The Undertaker dictates the pace as Triple H gets beaten all around the outside area. So far, Hunter's claims of excelling inside cell matches seem more like wishful thinking. The match gets back inside the ring where Hunter fares a little better, but Taker doesn't make it easy. Sean watches on as Taker hits old school, and The Undertaker brings it back to the outside. The absolute worst place Triple H could be right now. Hunter gets leveled with the steel steps, and the dead man throws the same steps into the ring, but Hunter manages to pull off a DDT to stop Taker's momentum. The Phenom manages to reverse a pedigree attempt on the steps, but he ends up taking a spine buster. Hunter goes in for the kill here, but The Undertaker locks in Hell's Gate, the same move that ended the previous Taker vs Triple H match. Hunter gets out by hitting a powerbomb on the dead man, but it only gets a two count. Hunter then throws a few chairs into the ring and The Undertaker takes a beating. The steps are used again to cause damage to the dead man, and Triple H goes back to nailing The Undertaker with a series of chair shots. This all becomes too much for Michaels. Sean takes the chair away from Hunter, and he tells his friend to cover Taker. Sean tells Hunter that Taker isn't going to quit, so Triple H should pin the dead man and end the match. Sean checks on The Undertaker, but Triple H shoves HBK out of the way to land more chair shots. And Triple H screams at Sean to call for the bell. It's over. And if Sean doesn't end the match now, then Triple H is going to end The Undertaker. Sean checks on The Undertaker again, and Taker tells Sean not to end the match. This leads to more chair shots from Triple H. The game finally covers Taker, but the Phenom kicks out at two. Taker again tells Sean not to stop the match, but Triple H is screaming at HBK to do the opposite. Triple H grabs his sledgehammer, Sean begs The Undertaker to allow him to call for the bell, Taker says no, and so the dead man gets nailed by Hunter. Again, Taker kicks out, and the match is now beginning to take a toll on Shawn Michaels. Hunter goes to crush The Undertaker's skull with the sledgehammer, and HBK intervenes, taking the sledgehammer away from his friend. Triple H tells Shawn, well, if this is what he's gonna do, then Shawn needs to end the match now. HBK is showing way too much compassion here, and if Taker can't take the beating, then Triple H should be the winner. Sean tells Taker he's sorry. He goes to ask for the bell. He checks on Taker one final time before ending the match, but the dead man locks in Hell's Gate to make sure Sean won't call for the bell. Hunter breaks it up with his sledgehammer, but the game also finds himself locked in the submission hold. The game ends up passing out, 
But there's no referee to call for the bell. This Hell in a Cell match is gonna continue. Charles Robinson runs down to take over referee duties, Hunter takes a choke slam, he kicks out a 2, and Robinson ends up taking a choke slam too for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Taker goes to finish it with a tombstone, but Triple H pushes Taker into HBK and Sean hits a super kick. A pedigree follows, and I remember legitimately thinking that this could really be the end of the streak right here. But no, Taker kicks out. The weight of the match is now getting to Sean in a bad way. He tries to stop Hunter from using the sledgehammer again, but Hunter throws his friend out of the ring. The Undertaker then begins building a ton of momentum as the crowd goes nuts. We see a tombstone. Sean gets back in the ring to count the finish, but Triple H kicks out. HBK is seriously torn about what to do next, but he decides to let the match play out. He sits in the corner and watches on as Hunter and Taker beat the hell out of each other. It's another fist fight, another pedigree from the game, and another kick out from The Undertaker sends Sean right back to the corner. And by this point, the audience are totally engrossed in the match. Something's gotta give here, and it could go either way. The Undertaker grabs a steel chair and the tables are turned. It's Triple H's time to take a series of chair shots as HBK begs Taker to stop. After a ton of chair shots, Taker pins Hunter and the game kicks out, but the damage has been done. Triple H grabs his sledgehammer and he goes for the kill one more time, but he doesn't have enough left. The Phenom takes the sledgehammer away and Hunter defiantly shoves his opponent. It's like Hunter's body was giving up, but his mind wanted to keep fighting. Triple H gives Taker the crotch chop and Taker replies with a sledgehammer to the face. Sean can't watch anymore as The Undertaker signals for the end of an era. We see a tombstone pile driver, and the match is over. The Undertaker wins via pinfall. After the final bell, Sean offers a hand to The Undertaker. Taker stands up and the two men embrace. The pyro goes off around the arena and Sean goes over to his best friend. Both Sean and The Undertaker help Triple H back to his feet, and all three men walk back up the ramp together. They get to the top, they look out of the arena, and they hug as the crowd roars in approval. Triple H said that this was unplanned, and he has a photo of this very moment in his office at WWE headquarters. It was the end of an era. For old school fans of 90s wrestling, it was the final time we'd see these guys in the same ring together. And no, let's not ruin a good story with the ill-fated DX vs Brothers of Destruction match at Crown Jewel 2018. Did the Hell in a Cell match deliver though? I thought it did. There was a lot of focus put on the emotion of the match and the story of the match. And I'm absolutely fine with this, especially seeing as The Undertaker had started to seriously slow down his in-ring appearances. The build-up to the match was fantastic. You may think it was a little promo heavy, but everything made sense, and it made the Hell in a Cell match more meaningful when WrestleMania 28 finally arrived in Miami. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very, very much for watching.